Whether you want to host a WordPress site, a Ghost blog, a Next.js application, even a Django or Ruby on Rails application, you can do all that for about five bucks a month. In this video, we'll set up a virtual private server, a VPS, on Hetzner. The exact same principles apply to DigitalOcean, Hostinger, any of those providers. This video is a starting point, a foundation. Once you have a VPS set up, the possibilities are endless. In the first part of the video, we'll buy and set up our VPS. Then in the second part, we'll connect it to a live domain on Cloudflare. We'll end up with a domain that's accessible over both HTTP and HTTPS. Let's dive in. We'll start here in the Hetzner console, where I have a project created called You Need a VPS. We'll go ahead and create our server. And I'll walk you through all the steps. If you don't have an account, I'll share a referral link in the description. You don't need to use that one. You can just create an account without it. But if you do, we both get 20, 20 euros, I think. So here in creating a server, there are currently three resource types. Cost optimized and regular performance are both using shared CPU, which means the CPU that you use is shared. This is great though for when you're getting started, unless you're doing like image manipulations and, and you're constantly hammering the CPU, the one of the two shared resources is probably recommended. Once you go a little further and you get a lot of traffic, then you would want a general purpose machine. So I'm gonna go cost optimize. And as you can see, it starts from two euro 99 a month, two euro 99 a month. What the frick dude, it's a great starting price and we can always scale up later. So we'll click this one and scroll down to location. So currently there are three locations that I can use this cheap VPS in. Nuremberg, Falkenstein and Helsinki. There's a great website called cloudping.info that you can use to see what is closest to you. So let me go to cloudping.info, HTTP ping. And if I scroll down, somewhere there is going to be a Hetzner list here, Hetzner. From this ping, you can see actually Falkenstein is closer to me. Now this can vary. Yesterday when I ran it, Falkenstein said a bit more, now it's less. So for today, I'm just gonna use the Falkenstein location. Ideally though, I would use Ashburn, Virginia, that is closest to me, but currently that's not available under this super budget plan. So Falkenstein. Okay, next up, we need to choose our Linux image. I'm gonna go ahead and pick Ubuntu or Ubuntu. We will use Ubuntu because it's the most popular server distribution in the world. It's Easy to find support for almost any issue. Networking. So we will need an IP4 address. We'll use this to connect our domain to our IP. This is the additional 50 cents a month, you see. That's because it's a scarce resource. Next, we'll need SSH keys. If you already have an SSH key, you can paste in your public key here and move on. Because this is an intro video, I'll quickly generate one. So I'm gonna open up my terminal, make the font size a little bigger. Okay, and I'm gonna to go to my SSH folder. And the command I'm gonna run is SSH keygen dash T, the algorithm, it's gonna ask me for a file name. And I'm gonna call this ID Hetzner. I don't need a passphrase for now. And we've created a private key. Okay, so the private key comes with, or sorry, the key pair comes in two pairs. The private key that you'll keep on your machine and the public key that you can share with the internet. We'll use this for a machine, but you can use it for GitHub and GitLab and all that stuff. You wanna copy this. On Mac, there's an easy command. I can say idhetzner.pub and I'm gonna pipe it to pbcopy, which will copy the contents of this public key. All right, back to Hetzner. Add SSH key. Here's the key. I will set it as the default key and add. Next up, volumes. 
We're not going to add any volumes, but if you wanted to add additional storage, here's where you could create a volume. You know, say I want another 100 gigabytes, and then that's what you can use. We won't be using this. Firewalls. We'll set up a firewall on the VPS later. You could do it here in the panel too. I prefer to do it on the machine. So we'll skip this for now. Backups, we won't be having any backups. Placement groups. If you have multiple servers, you can put them in placement groups so that they're all in different locations. Labels, these are more for you. If you have many VPSs, you can tell them apart by labels. So I'm just going to say this one is environment equals production. See, this is just for me. Nobody's going to see this. And cloud config is the last one. This is a script that runs on server creation. This is useful if you create VPSs, create and destroy VPSs all the time, but we're going to skip it and keep things simple. And finally, our server name. This is just the host name of your VPS. It's not very important, so I'm just going to leave this as is. Create and buy now. All right, a server is being created. Right now, Hetzner is provisioning our server, and we're about to be able to SSH into it. Server created, gang gang, for only three fifty. Well, three, that's euros. That's about four dollars. We created a VPS. Let's try and SSH into it. Okay, let's copy this. And I'm going to open up Ghosty. I'm going to say SSH, use the new identity I created, which is ID Hetzner. And we want to go root at here. We're in. OK, by default, we log in as root, which is fine. But it's good practice to add a non root user. Let's create a new user. So I'm going to say add user Yellis. Password 123. Password one two three, and this we can leave all empty. This is correct. Okay, I have a new user named Yelis. That's me. Now we want to be able to call sudo or sudo with this user. So in order to do that, we need to add these users to the sudoers group. The command we're going to run is user mod, user modify, append. We're going to append. What are we going to append? A group to sudo, and we say yellis. And the last thing we need to do is copy our SSH keys from the root directory to our new user's home directory. We're going to recursively copy root SSH to home yellis. OK. Now, we so we copy this entire SSH folder. Next, we need to change the ownership so that the files belong to my new user too. So say change ownership recursive. Yellis is the user and the group is also Yellis. And then home slash Yellis dot SSH. Nice. Let's log out. And we'll reconnect, but instead of root, we'll use Yellis. Okay, see now I'm logged in as Yelis. This is just good practice. This is what you want to do. Okay, we're logged in as our new user. The first thing we're going to do is update our packages. So we have a command and it will be sudo apt update. It's gonna ask me for a password to make sure, like, hey, this is a this is an important command. And I'm gonna do my password. So this will update the list of all available packages. Now we wanna actually install them. So that will be sudo apt upgrade. Sometimes you'll see dash y for yes. So it won't prompt you, but I kind of like seeing the prompt before I do it. So these are all the new packages. Yes, it's going to install the packages. Done. It's all updated. Now one more thing we're going to do is install Nginx. Nginx is probably one of the best web servers, reverse proxies on the internet. And we'll do the same command, sudo apt install nginx. And this time we will use the yes flag. See, it's not asking us for permission. And it will install it. On Ubuntu, installing nginx automatically installs, enables, and starts nginx. So we can do system ctl status nginx. And we'll see it's active. So what that means 
is we can now go back to Hetzner and our IP here. Let's open up in a new tab. Welcome to Nginx. So our VPS is publicly accessible over the internet, which is cool. Uh, if we add HTTPS though, we're gonna say it's it's gonna it cannot connect. So mind you, SSL does not work yet. But this is pretty cool. It works. So before we continue on registering our domain, there's one more thing we need to do, and that's set up our firewall. Ubuntu comes with something called an uncomplicated firewall, UFW for short. It allows us to manage incoming and outgoing connections without touching complicated IP table rules. It sounds complicated. It's really not, I'll show you. So we'll say UFW status. We need to be rude. So a little pro tip, sudo. It's inactive. A little pro tip, the two uh, exclamation marks run the last command. So currently we have no firewall. But before we enable it, and this is very important, we need to tell what to allow. If you, for example, block SSH or don't allow SSH, you'll get locked out and it will be pretty hard to get back in. Trust me, I've been there. It's not fun. So let's see the apps that we have that we can allow and deny. We'll say sudo ufw app list. First, we want to enable SSH. These are the templates that you can see. If you want to see what's actually under the hood, we can say sudo ufw app info open SSH. And it shows you, okay, open SSH requires port 22 TCP, open or closed. So we'll say sudo ufw allow open SSH. Rules updated. Great, so now we allow open SSH. And let's just say sudo ufw enable. Yes. Firewall is enabled. Now let's go back to our IP address. It won't be able to establish a connection because the firewall just blocks it. This is a great example of how why it is important. Imagine we had a Postgres server running, open port, everybody can try and brute force it. You're gonna have a bad time. Anyway, this won't load. So we go back and we say sudo ufw allow nginx full. And note the quote here because there's a space. Now let's refresh. It's gonna work. All right, we've successfully set up a VPS. This is great, this is a great start. It's up and running, but it's only accessible through that IP address. And of course, nobody is gonna remember that IP address. That's why we need a publicly accessible domain and we can set it up through Cloudflare. Why Cloudflare? Well, their free plan is incredibly generous. Let me just show you the invoice they sent me the other day. Zero dollars, okay? And I've been a customer for years. They've never charged me a single dollar. So that's already pretty good. Remember that I started that VPS inside of Germany. So if I host some web apps, but they're behind Cloudflare and I set up caching, then they will cache my content across this network, right? So New Zealand, instead of someone from New Zealand having to request my assets in Germany or me in Austin having to access it from Germany, Cloudflare will serve it. What is also cool is they can reach 95% of the world's population within approximately 50 milliseconds. A blink of an eye is between 100 and 400 milliseconds. Like that's crazy. It's faster than the blink of an eye for 90%, 95% of the world. Here I am in my Cloudflare home. And if you already have a domain, you can click the onboarding button here. What do you got from Namecheap, GoDaddy? You can onboard it into Cloudflare and get all of the benefits. If you don't have a domain, I recommend buying it through Cloudflare because you buy it at cost. They don't make any money on buying a domain. I bought my domain to Cloudflare, let me find it. Okay, my domain is yellows.sexy. Okay, you should definitely have a domain. It's like your little piece of real estate on the internet. If you can, get the .com domain. If not, that's not the end of the world. We're now gonna set our DNS. So I'm going up, open up DNS here on the left, records. And we're gonna add two records. I'm gonna add an A record pointing to my IP. 
here it is, copy, add. If we use the add, it will be root. So we'll point to yellows.sexy. And this is the IP address. Save. And then we're gonna add a, another record, a C name or canonical name. And that one will be www. And we want www to point to the main yellows.sexy. One thing that's very important for both is to turn on this orange cloud. That means that it will go through Cloudflare's servers before going to you. This is the most important thing. We save. Now it will take a little while for the DNS to propagate. So you might have to wait a couple minutes. Next, we wanna turn on flexible SSL. This means that the data is encrypted between the visitor and Cloudflare, but not between Cloudflare and your VPS. That is an important distinction. So SSL TLS overview, and mine is already set to flexible. Now let's try going to yellas.sexy. And here we go. This domain now points to our VPS. And if you notice, it's HTTPS here, right? So it is a secure connection, even though we didn't have it earlier on in our VPS. Oh, that's crazy, that's very cool. All right, congratulations. You now have a VPS connected to a live domain over HTTPS. We set this up in almost no time. And from here, there's endless possibilities. We can create our own game servers. We can host Ruby on, Ruby on Rails. The possibilities are literally endless. Um, I would love for you to like and subscribe if you can. I never thought I would ask it, but it kind of shows YouTube that this is a good video and I hope it was for you. So yeah, again, congratulations. You now have a VPS connected to a live domain.